What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, the CSS Crichton 1TD. That's what we're gonna review today. This is a DIY kit that took the internet by storm. Jay Ziyagi reviewed it back in the day. I think he had the X model saying high praise. Cheap Audio Man reviewed them saying high praise. I got curious, I had to find out, so I secured a pair for myself and we're gonna chat about it. We'll do this review the same way we generally do. I'll tell you about some specs and standout features. I'll throw the main ones on screen so you guys can check that out. I'll tell you what the speakers sound like. Um, I'll tell you about some amplifier pairings I did because I got a few here. I got the Galleon from Thomas and Stereo. I have an Emotiva TA2 that's behind me. I'm probably hiding it. Oh, I just hit the mic. Hopefully that wasn't loud. I got the beautiful Hegel H190 here as well as my own reference setup, which is the Kinky Studio preamp and mono blocks. Um, and then we'll wrap up the video. So. Before we jump into all that, I want to tell you a little bit of a story about how I ended up with these because at first, you know, what other guys were saying about these speakers, like, you know, they, they were so impressed. I was like, there's no way, like, they have to be exaggerating a little bit, right? So I secured a pair. Uh, they, they were secondhand. I bought them on the used market and, and they had been through a few hands. The person I bought them from told me he wasn't the builder or the original owner, nor was the guy he bought them from. So... Who knows how many hands these things had been through. I brought them home, I plugged them in, and they sounded terrible at first. And I was like, aha, I knew it. Jay was exaggerating. Cheap Audio Man was exaggerating. But then I thought, you know what? Uh, I, ought to t I ought to shoot them some text messages, see what they have to say about it, because you know these are used, and, and maybe I'm doing something wrong. So I texted Jay, and he was like, yeah, I didn't run into any of what you're describing. And I was like, all right, all right, fair enough. You know These are used. And, and then I text Randy. And he called me and he actually gave me really good advice. He was like, hey, Nemo, you got to remember, this is a DIY kit. So it could have been assembled poorly or it could have just been damaged in transit because there's no like shipping package for them. Like you, you buy these, they come in a flat pack. So when someone sells them and they ship them across the country a couple of times, they're just packaging them up, packaging them up the best they can. So take them apart and see what's going on in there. And that was very helpful advice. So I, I listened to Randy, I pulled out the drivers, I did a full breakdown, and I found a ton of problems. All the foam had come loose and it was obstructing the port, so I repacked that. The crossovers had some cold solders on them. There were some areas where the connections were just not the best. I cleaned everything up the best I could, reassembled the speaker and put it back together. I put them on the stands. And I started to hear some, I hate to use this word, I hate it so much but I started to hear some magic. I started to hear something special. So I kept listening, I kept listening. They still didn't sound great. I still wasn't getting what Randy talked about, what Jay talked about, you know what I mean? And um, I started to put my hand around the speaker because I could tell something was off. Bass was like weak and stuff like that. And there was air leaking out from the side of the port. There was air leaking out around the tweeter and air leaking out around the driver and around the whole front baffle. Holy crap, this speaker was not sealed at all. My guess is whoever assembled them initially clamped the hell out of the front baffle just right in the middle, put way too much glue on the tops and the bottoms, and it must have just curved out and warped that front baffle or something. It was just, I'll be honest, it was one of the worst DIY assemblies I'd ever seen in my life. And I don't mean any disrespect to the original builder. He did his best. His best just wasn't all that good. You know what I mean? So here's why I'm telling you this story really is one, it's entertaining as hell in my opinion. And I think you'll find it entertaining. This trials and tribulations I went through. And the second thing I want to tell you is how these end now, how they are finished speakers. Amazing. We're going to, we're going to break it down in a second, but they're amazing. And some of you guys might be tempted to buy a pair on the used market and save a couple of bucks. And I don't want to discourage you from doing that, but you got to audition them first, listen to them first. You know what I mean? Check them out. Make sure they were built right because it's a DIY kit. You don't want to deal with the headache that I ran into. Anyway, back to the story. So air was leaking out of every hole in this damn cabinet. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm starting to hear some specialness. I, I, I think I want, I want to... I want to figure this out. I want to get these up to 100%. So I pulled out the crossovers and I took those to an electronics shop and I was like, resolder everything, make them perfect. And they did. I called CSS. I told them what was going on. I'm like, hey, I'm a small time reviewer. 
can you send me a flat pack? Can like, can you just help me out? I really want to review these speakers. I'm I'm sounding what I think. I'm hearing what I think can be something really special. But there's a lot of issues with the current cabinet, and they were super cool about it. They're like, we got you, bro. We have a pair of finished cabinets here that are a little rough around the edges. They're not something we'd ever sell to a customer, but we'll we'll send them to you. You can have them on the house. Super cool of them to do that, and that that's what you see here. These cabinets. So. I got the, the cabinets that were in great shape, um, crossovers I had them you know, redone, I reassembled everything, packed the foam real nicely, and I put them on the stands. And holy shit, guys, I was blown away. I was blown away. Uh, everything Jay talked about, everything Randy talked about, these speakers are absolutely phenomenal, so let's break down the sound. For, and just to be clear, I've got the 1TD model, not the X model. 1TD, the cheapest configuration, no upgraded parts, nothing, as cheap as it gets. We got a treble section that's gonna be on the dark side of neutral. This is a laid back speaker. Those of you that like to listen for long periods of time, the treble is absolutely non-offensive. I don't care how sensitive your ears are. These are on the dark side of neutral. They're still gonna give you a good amount of detail, don't get me wrong, but those of you for look, that are looking for like crazy dynamics in your cymbal crashes, this ain't it. This leans on the dark side of neutral. Moving down to the mid range, this is, there's, there's, there's goodness here. There's a lot of goodness. Tonality, mwah, fucking beautiful. It was rich, there was depth to it, there was weight to it, human voices sounded natural, organic, there was just realism. It was still open and expansive, but I would say mostly lean, leaning on the warm side of neutral with a lot of nice tonality, richness, a little bit of flavor to it. I really enjoyed the mid-range. Moving down to the bass, this is what blew my mind. Uh, most bass extension I've heard out of a bookshelf speaker ever. It's just, it's that simple. This is insane, the, the levels of bass I'm getting out of this speaker. Um, yeah, they extend lower than the eight inch monitor audio bronze 100s I had here. They extend lower than the Dynaudio Special 40s. Those are well known to be bass monsters. And they extend lower than the Bucard S400 Mark I or Mark II, and those are known to be bass monsters. Now, I'm not saying the CSS Crichton 1TD is better than the $3,600 Dynaudio Special 40 or it's better than the $2,000 Bucard S400. All I'm saying as far as bass extension goes, this speaker extends lower than all of those in my room. I could not believe it. Now, you do pay a small price for that. They are a little bit difficult to, to drive. And by little bit, I mean they're pretty hard to drive. They're one of the harder to drive speakers I've ever had in my room. Anytime you have a compact speaker and, and you know a bookshelf speaker is considered a compact speaker regardless of the size, and you've got a beefy driver in there that can pound out some bass, you're gonna take a hit to sensitivity. I talked to CSS about it because I wanted to make sure there were no other issues. I was like, hey, love the sound. This is what I'm getting. They sound phenomenal, lots of bass, but they're kind of hard to drive. And the guys at CSS were like, yeah, that, that was an intentional trade-off. We wanted the speaker to have really strong bass, really good extension. We knew we were gonna sacrifice some efficiency to make that happen. We felt it was well worth it, and I agree with them. I feel it is well worth well worth it. Um, incredible speaker from top to bottom. From treble down to bass, I very much enjoyed it. There was no mid-bass prominence or bump, so the bass was very linear. And despite being very strong, very powerful, and extending very low, I found it to be quick, I found it to be tonally rich, it had good texture to it, good note-to-note -note distinction. This is some of the best bass I've ever heard from a bookshelf speaker, I loved it. So, that's what they sound like. Um, I used a bunch of different amplifiers. Um, first and foremost, I used my Kinky Studio separates, preamp and mono blocks. Everything I told you just now, that's using that setup. Absolutely incredible. Um, using the Hegel H190, also fantastic. Um, nothing really stuck out too much um, compared to like the Kinky. The Emotiva, again, it was, it was very similar to using my Kinky separates. Um, took a slight hit in just overall refinement. The Kinky. Um, separates are $7,000. The Emotiva TA2 is $1,000, but still did a phenomenal job, very serviceable. In fact, that's probably gonna be my primary recommendation for anyone looking to get the CSS Crichton 1 TDs. The Emotiva TA2 is a badass amp to get because it's, it's got a ton of power. It's just under $1,000. It's got onboard base management if you decide to connect a subwoofer for some reason. And I will say, yes, a subwoofer is optional on these speakers. Usually, when I review bookshelf speakers, guys, 
I'm using them without a sub like 20% of the time just to get an idea for the tonality and then I'm using a sub for the remaining 80% of the time. With the CSS Crichton 1 TDs, it was the opposite. I used a subwoofer maybe, not even 20%, maybe 10%. 90% uh, of my listening was without a subwoofer. I did not feel it needed one. I just did not. Um, that's kind of a Nemo propaganda first. You, you guys know I'm, I, I love bass. I love subwoofers. That's mostly what I review. Subwoofer is optional for the CSS Crichton 1 TDs. Um, let's talk about the Thomas and Stereo amplifier, the Galleon TS120. Now... Here's the reality, at, at, at you know $3,500, um, I can't see a lot of people doing this pairing, but it was incredible. The Galleon TS120 opened up that treble. Remember how I told you it was on the dark side of neutral? Galleon really kicked it up. The treble became more extended, more refined, more detailed. I couldn't believe the difference this made. This was one of the bigger differences I've heard going from like one amplifier to another. Let's talk about bass control because, you know, tube amplifiers kind of suffer there. The speaker's hard to drive. Galleon TS120 absolutely killed it. It had no problem getting this speaker to play plenty loud. And with killer bass control, that did rival my mono block power amplifier. So, uh, and of course, you know, holographicness was just on the off the charts with the Galleon and CSS Crichton 1TD pairing. I'm gonna go ahead and say this. If you've got the budget, um, I do think the Galleon with the Crichtons is absolutely incredible. If you don't, the Emotiva TA2 is absolutely fantastic. It's going to be a little bit of a different sound, but the Emotiva TA2 is more, I would say, the reasonable pairing, right? You've got this like $700 pair DIY kit. The Emotiva TA2 is a thousand bucks. It's got plenty of power, a lot of like modern features and stuff. So that's I'll be honest, I, 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 as long as you got plenty of power, I don't think you could really go wrong with what amp you throw out these speakers. That's just keeping it 100, you know what I mean? Because I'm thinking about it, the Hagel did a great job, the Kinky Studio did a great job, all the amps kicked ass with this speaker. So let's talk about comparisons. This is where it gets odd. I don't know if I'm supposed to compare this to speakers that are under $1,000, right? Or like over $1,000. Let's do a little bit of both. If we compare the CSS Crichton 1TD I would say tonally, it was most similar to the Polk Reserve, but just way better in every way, um, way better. I love the Polk Reserve speakers, they're incredible. I love the tonal character, the voicing, and it's very similar to the Crichton. The Crichton just does it all better. All of it on another level, treble, mid-range, bass, phenomenal, way better. So when we compare the Crichton to speakers in and around its actual monetary value, it does beat pretty much all of them. You know what I mean? The Dyn Audio Emit 10, that's 800 bucks a pair. It's got slightly better treble, I'll give it that, but mid-range down CSS Crichton murders the Dyn Audio Emit 10. Um, Emit 10's got strong bass like the Crichton, but the Crichton has more controlled bass, more articulate bass, where the Dyn Audio Emit 10 by direct comparison is a little sloppy. The mid-range on the Dyn Audio Emit 10 is good, the mid-range on the CSS Crichton is even better. So, you know, under $1,000, the CSS Crichton 1 TD, I mean, if you've got the knowledge to build it, and, and I'll say this, here's the, here's the reality, it's not $700, and I just want to make that clear, because here's the thing, you're going to have some hidden costs, that's just the reality, right? You're, you're going to buy the kit, it's going to be, you're going to get the flat pack and all that stuff. Most people don't have a soldering iron, if you don't have a solder, soldering iron, you could buy a cheapie off of Amazon for like $30 with everything you need, right? Um... So you're going to add 30 bucks there. You're going to need some wood clamps. Not everyone have, has wood clamps. So figure another $30 in all the various wood clamps. You're going, to need, you're going to need to get a nice even clamp on it. I'd say $8 in glue. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say you're going to need another roughly $100 in finishing material, whether you decide to put a textured finish on it, a vinyl finish on it. Wood veneer certainly could go up in price a little bit more, but... I think the real cost for the speaker is going to be in the neighborhood of, you know, anywhere from $800 on the lowest side. Well, I'd say, no, the lowest side would be $700, assuming, you you know, you're, you're a handy guy and you have everything you need already. But I'd say all the way up to $1,000, maybe, you know, just, just a hair more for those of you that are going to put nice wood veneers on there. Uh, maybe pay someone to um, assemble it for you and things like that. But even still, even, even at 1000 bucks. These, these are killing it. I can't think of a speaker under $1,000 that can give these things a run for their money. 
Let's go over a thousand dollars. Um, Kef LS 50 Meta. Those are $1,600 a pair. They have better treble than the CSS Crichton 1 TD. Uh, my understanding is the 1 TD X steps up the treble quite a bit, but that's not what I have here. I have the cheaper one, the 1 TD. The Kef LS 50 Meta has the better treble. There's better separation in the notes, more clarity. It's, it's just better overall in the treble region it is. Mid-range, uh, Kef LS 50 Meta is just the more neutral. Um, some might consider it dry by direct comparison where the CSS Crichton 1 TD is just going to be much more tonally rich, musical, organic, have a sense of realism to it and things like that. Moving down to the base, the CSS Crichton 1 TD simply murders the Kef LS50 meta. It's not even a comparison. Uh, let's talk about the Focal Aria 906. That's $2,000 for the pair. Actually, they raised the price, it's $2,200 a pair now, a price that I would like to say in slight protest is not worth it. So the I'm not gonna get into it, I'm not gonna get into it. I love the Focal Aria 906, but 2,200 bucks, come on, man. Anyhow, I digress. Treble on the Focal Aria 906 is on another level. The CSS Crichton 1 TD cannot compare. The Focal Aria 906 is gonna give you a ton more clarity. It's gonna dig into the recording a lot more. It's on the forward side of neutral. The CSS Crichton 1 TD is on the darker side of neutral. It's more relaxing and so on. They are polar opposites in terms of their treble response or treble presentation, I should say. Moving down to the mid-range, again, these speakers are polar opposites. Focal RA906 is gonna be a little bit cool in the mid-range, but very open and expansive. CSS Crichton 1 TD is gonna be more romantic, tonally rich, and so on in the mid-range. Um, this is gonna be more of a matter of personal taste, but I do believe many people will prefer the Crichton 1 TD mid-range over the Focal RA906. Moving down to the bass, both speakers have very quick and very articulate bass. However, the CSS Crichton 1 TD extends much lower than the Focal Aria 906 and has a much more bass quantity overall. Um, let's compare it to one last speaker, then we're gonna wrap this shit up. Uh, Bucard S400 Mark II, my favorite speakers in the whole wild world, whole wide world, wild word. That's a bit of a tongue twister, whole wide world, there we go. Um, I love those speakers, they're, they're, they're my daily drivers, everybody knows that. Um, let's start with the treble. The Bucard S400 is gonna have more treble energy, a little bit more clarity. Just, just so we're clear, almost anything I compare to the CSS Crichton is gonna be a little bit more forward, is gonna have more clarity, more openness, and so on, because the CSS Crichton 1 TD is on the dark side of neutral, right? So I'm gonna give the win to the Bucard S400 in terms of mid-range, I'm sorry, in terms of treble, clarity, openness, expansiveness, for sure. Moving down to the mid-range, this is gonna be a matter of personal taste. It's hard to say that one speaker is really better than the other, um, both are going to lean on the warm side of neutral, absolutely. Um, the Bucard S400 is just slightly on the warm side of neutral. The CSS Crichton 1 TD is a little bit more romantic than the Bucard S400 is. Um, so I, I, I can't really pick a winner there. It's just how much warmth do you want? I didn't think either speaker was necessarily did anything like better or worse. As far, as far as like um, their technical ability, like they had both had really good imaging, soundstage depth. Uh, I would say width and height, Bucard S400 staged a little bit bigger, um, but both had a very good mid range. Moving down to the bass, they both have linear bass response that is very, very strong, very, very powerful, and has very good extension for the size. Um, both speakers exhibited good bass control, but I will give the slight edge to the CSS-1 TD. Um, in terms of extension, it did have more extension than the Bucard S400 Mark II in this room. However, do keep in mind, both speakers do need a proper amplifier, more so for the CSS Crichton 1 TD as it is the less sensitive speaker. So, that is the comparison, guys. Um, you know, I've used a bunch of different amplifiers. I've had this speaker for like six months now. I went through hell and high water getting it set up right. Um, again, special thank you to CSS for, for getting me these cabinets. They look beautiful. Um, this is definitely a speaker I'm gonna keep for a while because what it could do uh, is amazing in terms of its bass response and mid-range. And I don't mind trouble being on the dark side of neutral. I, I actually, um, I'm, I'm not too sensitive, believe it or not, to, uh, speaker that is dark or like a little bit bright even. I know like some people really like have a preference like there's people that only like that focal sound that is like bright, energetic, forward and sharp. And, and I like that sound. But then I also really like that like darker, warmer sound even if it loses a little bit of detail or like sparkle, I'm totally okay with that. 
Um, where, where I'm most picky is actually the bass portion for a speaker, and these are just phenomenal there. Um, if you have any questions, this channel does have a free Discord. If you liked what you saw, leave a like. If you don't, leave a thumbs down and fuck off. I don't care either way. If you want to see more of my content, you can subscribe. I think we all know how YouTube works now. If you do join my free Discord, don't be an asshole. Don't be the kind of guy that sees a picture of someone's system and tells them they've got it all set up wrong. No one cares. Everyone that set up their system the best they can. A lot of people have imperfect rooms. It is what it is. I think we're all going to make it to audiophile heaven either way. If your question is fairly on the simple side, by all means, feel free to use the YouTube comments. But if we're going to require a lot of back and forth, the Discord is the easier place to chat. Um, if you think I've left anything out or if you own these speakers, leave your impressions in the comments. I'd be curious to hear what owners think. Um, this is one speaker that was interesting. Out of everyone in my Discord, we've got a, a, about 770 people. There was only one person who had actually owned these. He owned three of them, actually. <laughs> And he really loved them. So I'm curious to hear, you know, what do you guys think about these? Have you heard them? And with that said, we're going to wrap this shit up. And until next time, later.